Hello, thank you for paying the currency of your attention to watch this video. I appreciate it and God bless you. Amen. I want to share this thought with you as to what can kill a church congregation in a matter of time. Let me explain what I mean and I will do that from Psalm chapter 133 from verse 1. Many of believers know that scripture and it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For it is like the ointment that flows from the head of Aaron through his beard and through his cat. And then the Bible says, For in the midst of them the Lord commands his blessing. Do you know, beloved, that the opposite of that scripture is also true? And that is how a church congregation in a matter of time can be killed, can be destroyed, can go into extinction. And it is by reading that scripture this way. Behold, how bad and how unpleasant it is for brethren to dwell in disunity. For there the anointing of God is resisted. It doesn't flow down. And then the blessings of God cannot manifest in that congregation. And if these are the things happening in that congregation, it's only a matter of time that congregation will disintegrate. The congregation will become weakened in unity. And before you know it, it will shut down. This understanding of what this scripture means will eventually move you to watch out for people in your congregation who have masters in keeping mallets. They find it difficult to forgive and to let go of offenses. Such people keep mallets to such an extent that they become murderers. They now use their tongue to murder, to assassinate the character, the personality of other people. Please watch out for such people because they become the agent of destruction to kill that congregation in a matter of time. Such people have PhD, what I call pull him down syndrome or pull her down syndrome. These people are out to pull down people who are working, people who God is using. They begin to say something like, is he the only one there? Is she the only one there? Why can't God also use us? Remember the story of Moses, his sister Miriam and Aaron, you know, they were saying, why is it only Moses? Why is it only you that God is using? God also can use us. And then Moses said, well, let God judge between two of us. God said, if I don't deal with these people, they are going to cause the canker worm and the cancer of uh, hatred, of bitterness, of envy, of jealousy, of malice, of slander. To thrive in this congregation. So God publicly dealt with Miriam. And of course, God did not spare Korah, Datan, and Abiram in the days of Moses, who stood against him to divide the congregation, to cause envy, to cause strife, to cause disunity amongst the congregation. God did not spare them. The ground opened up and swallowed them. So you need to watch out for people who have masters in keeping mallets and in murdering people's character and personalities with their mouth. For example, if somebody comes to complain about a church member, about a brother or a sister to you, trying to belittle the person, trying to talk negatively about the person, trying to complain about the person, the next thing you want to ask the person that has brought such conversation to you is, can you confidently say what you are saying to me now about this brother or this sister if he or she were here? So if the person will say, yes, I can, then maybe it's something you want to look into to correct an anomaly and something that may be going wrong in the congregation. But if the person has a withdrawal of coming forward to say the same thing that he or she said against that brother or that sister, to their faces then you want to chase that person out of your presence you don't want to give that person an operating room in the congregation because they become the agent that the devil will use 
to kill that congregation, to weaken that congregation, and to stop the move of God. So remember that scripture once again. The positive is true, and the negative is also true in Psalm chapter 133. Behold, how bad and how unpleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity, or in disunity rather, for there the anointing of God will not flow down and the blessing of God will not manifest. If the anointing does not flow, the Bible says in Isaiah 10, 27, it is through the anointing that the yoke is broken. That means if the anointing does not flow for yokes to be broken, people will be in bondage, people will be in captivity, all kinds of sicknesses, infirmities and diseases all kinds of mishap, all kinds of affliction will be happening in that congregation. And of course, God's blessing will not manifest in that congregation. Beloved, because of the grave consequence of this unity, grave consequence of setting people against themselves and holding offenses and not forgiving other people and having bitterness, you want to take a strong stand against this unity and anyone that the devil may want to use to cause this unity. I pray for you. I pray for your congregation. I pray for your team members in the house of God and maybe even in your place of work that the spirit of unity will thrive. The spirit of unity will dominate. The spirit of unity will prevail in the name of Jesus. Anyone that is hurt, anyone that is wounded in their heart and they are out on a revengeful mission, God will minister healing to their heart. God will minister life, reconciliation, health to their heart in the name of Jesus. And if this video has blessed you, please give it a like and drop your comment in the comment section below in case you have any question or any clarification you have around this conversation. And as you do that, God will bless you. In case you also know a brother, a pastor, a member of your church or a sister that needs to watch this video, share it with them and encourage their heart as we keep the body of Christ strong together and we keep growing together to fulfill the mandate of populating the earth with the glory and the goodness of God. Amen. God bless you and see you in my next video. Bye for now.